The World Health Organization, WHO, was established on April 7, 1948, following the ratification of its constitution by 26 United Nations member states. As a specialized agency of the UN, the whole health organization was created to address global health issues and improve health outcomes worldwide. Its formation was part of broader post-World War II efforts to foster international cooperation and prevent future conflicts by addressing fundamental human needs, including health. The organization's mandate covers a wide range of health issues, from infectious disease control to promoting healthy living and developing health systems. One of its earliest successes was the global campaign to eradicate smallpox, culminating in the disease's eradication in 1980, marking a historic victory for global public health. Throughout its history, the whole health organization has played a crucial role in responding to health emergencies, such as the HIV-AIDS epidemic, the SARS outbreak in 2003, the Ebola virus outbreaks, and more recently, the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite its achievements, the whole health organization has faced criticism and challenges, including issues related to governments, funding, and political influences. This video explores the criticisms aimed at the whole health organization by BRICS countries and the Global South, which have sparked discussions about potential alternatives to the organization. Many Global South countries criticize the whole health organization for being overly influenced by Western nations, which often leads to decision-making that reflects the priorities of wealthy nations while sidelining the needs of poorer countries. The European Union, for instance, is grappling with its role in a multipolar world where countries from the global south are demanding more representation and influence in global governance structures, including the whole health organization. This reflects a broader desire for these countries to have a greater say in international institutions traditionally dominated by Western powers. Examining the whole health organization's leadership over the past two decades reveals a predominance of Western leaders until recently. Gro Harlem Brundtland from Norway served as Director General from July 1998 to January 2003, known for her emphasis on sustainable development and global health issues. Lee Jong-wook of South Korea led the whole health organization from January 2003 until his death in May 2006, focusing on combating infectious diseases. Anders Nordström from Sweden served as Acting Director General from May 2006 to November 2006, followed by Margaret Chan from Hong Kong, whole health organization served until June 2017. Chan's tenure included significant efforts to reform the whole health organization's response to global health emergencies. Since July 2017, Tetros Adhanom Ghebreyesus from Ethiopia has been serving as Director General with a focus on universal health coverage, health emergencies, and addressing social determinants of health, particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic. The whole health organization's reliance on voluntary contributions from member states has led to criticism about uneven resource distribution. This funding model, where voluntary contributions make up 88% of the whole health organization's budget, allows donors, primarily from high-income Western countries, to earmark funds for specific projects that align with their own interests, often sidelining the core priorities of the whole health organization. During the COVID-19 pandemic, this model contributed to significant disparities in vaccine distribution, with wealthier nations prioritized in the rollout, leaving many countries in the global south struggling to access essential vaccines and medical supplies. Budget constraints further limit the whole health organization's ability to respond flexibly to global health crises. Efforts to increase funding flexibility such as the introduction of the core voluntary contributions account and thematic voluntary funds have shown some progress with flexible funding reaching a record $290 million in 2021. These funds are crucial as they allow the whole health organization to respond more effectively to emerging health priorities and crises. The response to the COVID-19 pandemic has been a major point of contention, with critics arguing that the whole health organization was slow to act and failed to provide adequate support to developing countries. Vaccine distribution was a significant issue with wealthier nations receiving the lion's share of available doses while many countries in the global south face severe shortages. The whole health organization faced criticism for its delayed declaration of COVID-19 as a global pandemic and its initially cautious stance on travel restrictions, which arguably allowed the virus to spread more widely before decisive action was taken. The unequal distribution of vaccines has reinforced perceptions of inequality and inefficiency in the whole health organization's operations. Efforts like the COVAX initiative aim to ensure fair and equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines worldwide, but face significant challenges due to supply chain issues and hoarding by wealthier countries. This situation exacerbated the health crisis in poorer nations, leading to prolonged outbreaks and higher mortality rates, underscoring the need for more equitable global health strategies. 
BRICS countries have not collectively criticized the whole health organization in a direct manner, but individual member countries have expressed dissatisfaction with certain whole health organization actions or decisions. For instance, China was reportedly frustrated with the whole health organization's slow response and calls for investigations into the origins of COVID-19. Brazil under President Jair Bolsonaro criticized the whole health organization's recommendations during the pandemic. India expressed dissatisfaction with the whole health organization's stance on intellectual property rights related to vaccine production and called for a waiver on patents to increase accessibility in developing countries. The BRICS countries often emphasize the need for reforming international institutions to better reflect the interests of emerging economies and the global south. This general stance suggests a critical view of the status quo, including the operations and policies of organizations like the Whole Health Organization. Several African countries have also voiced concerns about the Whole Health Organization's priorities and resource allocation, arguing that it often focuses on issues pertinent to wealthier nations while neglecting diseases and health crises more prevalent in the global south. There are proposals for alternatives or supplements to the Whole Health Organization in response to criticisms regarding its effectiveness and perceived biases. These include forming a BRICS Health Alliance, establishing stronger regional health organizations, enhancing the role of existing multilateral institutions, increasing the involvement of non-governmental organizations and private sector partnerships, and implementing comprehensive reforms within the Whole Health Organization itself. These alternatives aim to address the perceived shortcomings of the whole health organization and enhance global health governance by incorporating diverse perspectives and more effectively addressing the health needs of all regions. Interestingly, the United States shares some of the Global South's dissatisfaction with the whole health organization, particularly regarding its management and leadership. Both parties have voiced concerns over the organization's decision-making processes and perceived biases, calling for significant reforms to enhance its effectiveness and equitable representation. The U.S. has also criticized the whole health organization's handling of health emergencies and its coordination efforts, arguing that current bureaucratic processes hinder timely and efficient action. These criticisms reflect broad broader challenges in international health governance and highlight the ongoing debate about the whole health organization's role and effectiveness in managing global health issues, with calls for significant reforms to ensure it can better serve all member states and effectively address future health emergencies. That's where we wrap things for today. Thanks for watching. See you in our next video.